Is Nanayao still with us? All right, let's, let's now connect with uh, Peter uh, Seno. Peter, very good morning to you. Hello, Peter. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Good morning. Okay, and you're reporting uh, from the OT region where some residents of CB in the Nkwanta North District have suffered uh, from acute water shortages. What is the current situation uh, when it comes to that? The situation, I would say it's dire. It's a very serious one uh, with regard to the CB community. In fact, the current situation is that they would have to dig the ground um, there is a stagnant water, so they would have to scoop the ground such that the little that comes out, someone I mean, sits in the hole and then fetches it into the bowl until he or she is done, another person steps in. And so there are several of these dugouts uh, along that stagnant water where they fit their water. In fact, some of them have to travel to as far as Damanko or Kwaza, if they want to drink that clean water, they would have to not drink for a day. And then they say it costs them not less than 50 Ghana cities a day to do that. And this, I can say, is affecting every facet of, of, of life in that community. Because yesterday I spent almost the whole day with them trying to understand exactly what the situation is. And it is not a pleasant one. The water, I would even say, it stinks because um, the source of the water now, it's like a valley between two communities. And so when rain falls, it goes down from each end. And so the rubbish, everything filthy goes in there. And so what is left now is very stinking. They share with animals. And that is what they depend on currently as we speak. Uh, uh, Peter, are there any, any alternatives apart from this? Are there any alternatives that the people have? Or, or, or is this what they've been reduced to, that if they do not get this, uh, for those who can't even make this journey, what, what do they do? Uh, well, yes, exactly the point. Mm. This is their main source of water. In fact, there are boreholes. There are boreholes uh, in the community, but they are not functioning. It's like a hilltop. And so it's, it, they, they do it for them, and then it doesn't work. And so this is what they have been reduced to. Those who cannot afford to travel that long or much for water, this is what they depend on for daily activities. In fact, some of them drank this off camera, and then it is not a pleasant thing to do. More importantly, students are complaining that the whole day they come to sit here and in search of water, and they would spend the whole day here doing that. And you can see children, some of them turn the place into a playground. And so economic life, social life, everything in the community is to ground zero. If I spoke to some of the Muslims uh, in the community, they have started their Ramadan. And they, they say access to water to even do the ablution, and even in this difficult time of COVID-19, is a serious issue to them. I spoke to the health, um, I mean, personnel in the community, they lament that this is even affecting their other colleagues who may not want to stay in the community to mm -hmm. move away. And so mm -hmm. they come two or three months, they, they watch the situation, they are not okay with it, they leave. Teachers, the same thing is happening to them. And so they are only appealing that something be done urgently, right. that they can you know, live a life worthy of it with regard to uh, access to potable drinking water. And we've been going across the regions uh, to find out, you know, pockets of what exactly is transpiring there. You just heard from Peter Senu in the OT uh, region. Let's cross over now to Sekandi Takradi in the western region. And some residents are saying they are living in fear after recording three robbery cases in three days back to back. And Natalia Kwanza uh, joins us with details. And Natalia, a very good morning to you. Uh, what is the latest? Hi, good morning, Ben. Great. What is the latest on this development um, from the police and from the security agencies? What are they saying in respect of uh, this outbreak in crime? Well, Ben, this morning when you come to Second Eater you see a lot of police officers um, scattered all over on the major streets. And um, this morning, they are searching every vehicle. Um, they are arresting some motorbikes. They are doing search. They are making sure that they provide the maximum protection for the residents of Second E. Takrade. At 11 o'clock a.m. this morning, um, the regional commander would be meeting the media 
to talk about um, the crime, the robbery cases that have gone on in less than one week, to tell us what the police is doing, how they are liaising with their, um, their sister agencies. Yesterday, I had opportunity to speak to the deputy um, PRO for the Ghana Immigration Service because some residents were also raising the eyebrow that they feel that the, jail, the jailbreak in Imo State uh, could be a contributory factor to this robbery case. But um, Moses Manford, a couple with the deputy PRO, told me that no, that is never true because he can say with an authority that our borders are closed, the borders in the Western region are closed, and there is tight security over the residents are anxious they want to know what is happening they want to know if they are safe and then they have also raised issue about um non-availability of street lights at places so they've asked that um, the stma in particular provide street lights at places where there are no street lights so at least they can feel safer with the presence of police patrolling okay. day and night all right Natalia, thank you very much uh, for bringing us up to speed on all of these developments. And, of course, you can expect more on this network in the course of today. Uh, we take a bit of a breather and uh, wrap up after that.